Hi guys, what's up? It's Lindsay and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am starting off a vlog of the next few days because I feel like it's gonna be a good week. I am finally back in my routine. I was just in New York for vacation with my boyfriend, which was truly so much fun. And I did post TikToks from it. So if you wanna see like what I ate and what I wore, you can check that out. Um, but it feels so good to be back home and I'm hosting my friends tomorrow Tomorrow night for like a little wine and cheese and I really want to make gluten-free focaccia and probably cookies so I will definitely be doing that tomorrow but today I need to run some errands and I'm also gonna hang up some art in my apartment I'm entering my second year of living here and I feel like I'm finally finishing up the decor like there's just some open spaces on the walls and things that needed just like a little bit more to feel like I'm done because I haven't done a full apartment tour or anything like that because it just has always felt kind of unfinished. So I'm really excited to be working with Jesenio and show you guys the prints that I picked out and also where I'm gonna put them. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Just to give you guys an overview of what we're looking at, this is the wall that to me just feels unfinished. So I picked out a print to go right here. I also have this pretty awkward space that could have some prints on it. And then over here is my desk and my little filming area. And I feel like these walls could just benefit from something colorful and interesting. So that is the plan. This is the first print that I was just immediately drawn to. I feel like it goes so well with the decor in my apartment. And I opted for a light wood frame to go with all of the light oak wood in my living room. And I think I'm gonna hang this up over in my little filming corner, but I need your guys' opinions because the other large print is also very cute. And those are the two that I'm going in between for that spot. Print number two is this beautiful Matisse. And I have always been such a Matisse fan, but something a little bit more unique. And they had so many on Desenio. So I picked out this one, which has a cute little like breakfast plate, a palm tree. I might have to put this one in my bedroom. We'll see. And then this last one that I picked out is for this space right here on my gallery wall. And it is this beautiful art print with fish, a lemon, some matches. And I just love that kind of like wonky checkerboard background. It is just very charming. I love supporting artists and collecting art and Desenio is a great place to do both. They have thousands of beautiful photographs, art prints, paintings, and you can get them on canvases as art prints or even framed prints like I did, which come with the hardware ready to hang up. All you need is a hammer and a nail, which makes things just so much easier and it's much more affordable than in-person framing, which I have spent so much on in the past. This wall looks so much more balanced now. I feel like I really needed that. I wasn't planning on switching this one out, but I actually really like the way that it looks with this print because they both have that rich dark green. So I think I am gonna keep this one here for now. I don't know, we'll see. And now to hang the Matisse in this spot. Here is my trick for getting a perfect piece of art hung every time is to put a piece of tape from the top of the print to where you want your nail and then just make a little dot where the nail hole is and then make a line for the top of the print. So now when we go onto the wall, I know I want the top of the print here. So we have that hole and you can double check if it looks right. Obviously measure this to make sure it's a perfect distance. I am gonna do that before I make any holes, but it gets you pretty close to where you wanna be. If you wanna check them out, I will have my link in the description with all of the different pieces that I got and my discount. There it is. It doesn't even feel like October. I really rarely vlog out here because I do share it, 
but it is one of the spaces that I've learned to really enjoy this summer. I sit out here with my Kindle, I let Sammy sunbathe, and um, I feel like having just been in New York, I am appreciating the things I already knew I liked about LA, but like just the quietness and the ability to see the ocean are things that I could totally be taking advantage of more and so I've been trying to just sit in my yard more. I am so pleased with how these prints turned out in my apartment. I feel like my wall back there just looks so much more complete and I feel like they look like they already belonged here, which is exactly what I was going for. I didn't want, you know, anything major. I just wanted to finish it up a little bit. Here is the outfit I've been wearing today. This is Reformation, this is also Reformation. And then these are some Dolce Vita ballet flats and a Land's End little boat tote to hold my groceries because I'm picking up some stuff for tomorrow and also for dinner tonight because I really am craving a Greek salad with salmon and pickled onions. Last time I was vlogging in the car, I was complaining to you guys about Spotify playlists being super repetitive and everyone in the comments was like, you need to find playlists that real people have made instead of the AI generated playlists, which I totally agree with. It really just reminded me of how much I used to love making Spotify playlists and the only reason I stopped is because I've thought that the made for you playlists were better and because I, I still do to this day get so many emails of people trying to get their new song on my old playlists because I have followers on Spotify like you guys and they take that as a sign that I'm a curator and so they're like hey curator can you put this song on your playlist and I'm like I'm actually not a curator I'm just a girl um can you never email me again um, but it's all just spam. Um, but anyways, I wanted to get back into making Spotify playlists is what this rant is about. So I am making one for all of the music I'm listening to this fall. You should follow it. It has the new Mitski and new Slow Dive and the new Slow Pulp. Um, and I just, I miss talking about music with you guys because it's one of my favorite things. It is the same name as YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I got very lucky with that uh, branding identity. At the farmer's market this weekend, the lilies were $10 a bunch, but at Trader Joe's, they were $5 a bunch. So I got two bunches for the price of one. Pretty small little grocery haul because I had almost everything I needed. Just got some crackers and a demi baguette and some more olives for tomorrow night. They didn't have any wild caught salmon, but they were restocking as I walked up. So this is as fresh as they have it and I'm gonna cook it right away. Okay, so we're doing olive oil, garlic powder, salt, pepper, paprika, and some lemon zest. I use this smoked Spanish paprika from Penzi Spices and it's like way stronger and more flavorful, more like full body I feel than store-bought paprika that can sometimes just feel like dull. Dinner is all prepped to just go in the oven and then I chopped mostly everything up and put it in the fridge because I still have to walk Sammy and then my boyfriend's actually gonna come over and have dinner with me because I just have way too much salmon and we also have Love is Blind to watch. So that is my evening plans. I could not be more excited about it. Kalamata olives, tomato, some cucumber, avocado, vegan feta, arugula with olive oil and that lemon honey vinegar. This stuff is so good. I let my hair dry natural for the first time since getting bangs. I keep just feeling like it looks better blown out, but I haven't actually given my waves a try. And I feel like it looks pretty cute with the bangs. I do really need to trim them though. They got so long, so fast, even though it's been like two weeks. It is one o'clock and I am taking a break from editing to make some cookies for tonight. 
It's a one bowl recipe. It's gluten free. It's vegan. They're the biggest crowd pleaser. It is an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie with coconut and nuts. But I've actually made a variation that is more of like a oatmeal raisin cookie with coconut and a lot of cinnamon. So that's what I'm going to make. I will write below what changes I make to the recipe because I wanted kind of like a fall-ish baked good and oatmeal cookies are also just like my favorite dessert. And then this is the gluten-free focaccia recipe that I'm going to use later. I am going to Pilates at like four so I figured when I come back I will try my best to bake this gluten-free focaccia with rosemary and olives and my Brightland olive oil and if it doesn't turn out I bought my friend's baguette yesterday so we don't have to worry about it. Focaccia is like the most delicious bread in the world and it's something that I don't get to eat because I'm gluten free. So I thought it would be worth trying even if it doesn't turn out obviously as delicious as the real deal. I am gonna give it my all because you guys know I just love baked goods and I love baking and being gluten free shouldn't stop you from doing that. You just might have to try a little harder. <laughs> Fun fact about me is that when I was younger, I wanted to be a baker and open up a bakery. So being gluten free cannot stop my passion and love for baked goods. <laughs> Heaping teaspoon of Penzi's Vietnamese cinnamon. Like a quarter or a third of a teaspoon of cardamom one cup of rolled oats, and two thirds a cup of raisins. I almost forgot about coconut. Gonna do a third a cup. Gonna let this chill in the fridge for a little bit and make some lunch. Making a quick pasta salad for lunch with my leftovers from last night because everything was just like basically already ready. And I'm gonna do that same lemon, honey, vinegar, and the feta that I used last night. I actually hate cucumber, but I'm trying to be less picky and just using like a little bit of it here and there because I did that with tomatoes and now I love tomatoes. And it is the only vegetable I feel that way about, so it's just like inconvenient. Cookies are done. I just took Sammy for a walk and now I'm gonna go to Pilates. I have on this Aritzia bodysuit that is right under the knee, which is like a really unique cut. I got it because of Lainey Ozark. It was on sale, so I don't know if they still have it, but I really love Aritzia workout clothes. And I am out of breath from uh, trying to do everything on time today. Um, it's pretty hot out there, but we had a good walk. The experiment begins. I am now making the gluten-free focaccia. I poured it into this half sheet from Great Jones and it's going to rise for 30 minutes. There's not a lot of wiggle room for it to rise here, but because it's gluten-free, I just feel like how much is it gonna rise, you know? So we'll see. I'm gonna set this out on the counter for 30 minutes and we'll come back to her. The reason I invited friends over in the first place is because Miyoko's Creamery sent me some cheeses and most of my friends are vegan so I thought I would invite them to try out these new flavors with me because they're all cashew cheeses. So we have a classic chive cheese spread, smoked English farmhouse cheddar, and herbs de Provence. And I'm most excited to try this one but they're always all good. We're basically just having a vegan cheese tasting and I just love that for us. Got some nice washed grapes here to fill in the gaps. Candy pecans from Trader Joe's because they just perfectly will fit in these little holes. And they also just taste so good. I love candy pecans. You cannot have girl dinner without olives. I feel like I might even need more olives. My girls love olives.
Good morning. Last night was so sweet. It was so good to see all my friends and they loved the focaccia. Me as the person who made it, I know that it could be better. Like it truly didn't rise much. Um, so that's, that's just experiment number one. She did say in the instructions to use a different type of flour, just a different brand. Um, so I'm going to try again, but I, I would say it was a success. For breakfast this morning, I am using up my leftover rice, arugula, dill, and some pickled onions to make a bowl inspired by the restaurant Squirrel. Every time I go there, I get the Sorel Pesto Rice Bowl with pickled radishes and kale and avocado, and it is just like really fresh and delicious. I feel like I could eat it every day, and I don't know why I've never really tried to make it at home. A spoonful of Trader Joe's pesto. And their pesto rice has preserved lemon in it, so I'm just gonna dress the arugula with that lemon honey vinegar and some olive oil. If you can't tell, I really love vinegary pickled flavors, which my boyfriend doesn't. And I'm gonna top this with some fried eggs because I don't know how to poach an egg and that's okay. That breakfast was so good. I feel like it definitely read more as a lunch. So maybe eat it for lunch. I am now taking my supplements because I was talking to you guys a while back about my fatigue being worse and I just assumed it was because of my Hashimoto's, but we did a full panel run up of everything. So I am now including iron along with my Nutrafol and my monthly B12 shots. And so I just thought I would share if you need to take your supplements, take them with me. And if it's a habit you have trouble remembering, attach it to another habit, which for me is breakfast. So that is how I remember. I'm going to get a coffee out as a little treat and also drop off some denim at Denim Revival on 3rd Street because some of my favorite jeans have a hole in the crotch and another pair of jeans that I got at a sample sale are missing one of the buttons on the fly. So when I wear them, it's like kind of obvious like there's it's the one in the middle so it just looks like you forgot to button your pants um so i'm gonna drop those off because i love those two pairs of jeans so it's like definitely worth investing a little bit more into them as opposed to getting new jeans they're both pairs from reformation so they're like not cheap you know reformation wilder jeans and reformation cynthia jeans and kind of like a mid dark wash it's so nice for fall and I want to wear them. So I am going to take these in. I actually wore these on Monday, so you probably saw them, but they do in fact have a small hole. I haven't been wearing any eye makeup for the past like two weeks because I keep getting styes. I had one in this eye. I threw out all my makeup, washed all my makeup brushes, went to New York. And then when I got back, I got another sty, and I don't know what's causing it. I think it might be like my sunscreen, but I am just trying to be so careful about it, but it's annoying because I obviously want to wear mascara, but it does make taking your makeup off a little bit easier, so. This is what I'm wearing to go out to get coffee and run my errands. It is still really hot here, so I overheated on my walk in jeans and just knew I couldn't do it for the long haul. So this top is from La Casa. The skirt is a skort from Lisa Says Ga. And then I have my vintage Mary Janes and this bag from Anthropology. This is like a viral Anthropology bag. I got it for my trip on Depop and it honestly is pretty great. I get the hype, it has so much storage and just like a really nice slouchy shape. This is by far Daydream of Passing Clouds. Just dropped off my alterations at Denim Revival. That place has been there for so long and I love supporting my local tailors and craftsmen, getting my shoes shined and all of that. It definitely was pricier than my usual tailor, but I haven't had anyone be able to fix the button on those jeans, so it is worth it. I am now headed to Community Goods to meet Dom. She just texted Dom me. Said. 
Hi, sister. Sorry, running later. ETA 1245. That's so fine. I have some work to do.